This is the first episode in a new series called Historia. Historia is based on my own personal research. And while I cannot claim to be a historian, because there are people who have worked a very long time to earn that title, I do find that I do a lot of historical research. I really enjoy it. And in the midst of doing this research, I have found some topics that I think would make very compelling and interesting kind of documentary style videos. So this is going to be a documentary series. This is a little bit difficult to do because sometimes production values need to be much higher and sometimes the content that I can generate for these kind of topics may not be enough to create something of a high production quality. So what I think you're going to find throughout the series is that the production quality will vary from uh, really, really top of the line to probably a little bit more basic. This first episode is certainly one of those more basic ones. This really has a lot to do with just the content I'm able to find online as well as generate myself to make it compelling and interesting. But I hope you enjoy it. So sit back and relax and enjoy Historia. The sword is one of the most impressive innovations of ancient civilization. As a symbol of power and as a tool of war, it has stood the test of time, being an integral part of nearly every successful society that has ever existed. Yet many people are unaware of just how old an innovation it really is. In fact, until recently, historians didn't even have an accurate understanding. And it's only thanks to recent archaeological discoveries that we know that the sword now predates even the pyramids. This is thanks to finds at Arslantep. These swords are from the archaeological site Arslantep, and they date to around 3300 to 3000 BC. That potentially makes them older than the pyramids by 800 years. These are great insight to the innovations of our ancient forebears and are a rare and lucky find. But where were they found? Arslantep is located on the eastern side of Turkey, near Melid. The United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization describes this archaeological site as follows. The site of Arslantep is located at the Malatya Plain, five kilometers away from the city center and 15 kilometers away from the Euphrates right bank. It is a four hectares and three meter high archaeological mound dominating the plain and formed by the superimposition of settlements for millennia from at least the 6th millennium BCE to the late Roman period. The mound is surrounded by the Orduzu village. The long history of the site, located at the crossroads of the main civilizations of the Near East, reveals crucial events and processes of change in connection with the contemporary developments in Mesopotamia, Anatolia, and the South Caucasus. The extensive excavations carried out for more than 50 years by the Italian archaeological expedition of the Sapienza University of Rome have brought to light rich material remains of many civilizations superimposed in the site. This research has enlightened the millenarian history of the Upper Euphrates region and makes Arslantep an exceptional testimony to crucial stages in human history. The birth of hierarchical societies, that of the first centralized political and economic systems, the origin of bureaucracy and its first working system, the rise of systematic control on human labor, in other words, the origin of power and the state. The site also testifies to the fact that these crucial changes in human history took place for the first time over a large area, including, besides Mesopotamia, the Euphrates region in eastern Anatolia. In particular, the excavations have brought to light a large and monumental mud-brick architectural complex of public buildings which are interconnected to each other over 2,000 square meters, which constitute the first example of a public palace dated to the second half of the 4th millennium BCE.
The swords discovered at Arslantep were carbon dated to about 3300 to 3000 BC and are of an arsenogenic bronze, which is an arsenic copper alloy. A few of them feature complex decorative silver inlays, and it is unknown whether or not these have any real significance outside of pure decoration. Rosella Lorenzi from Discovery News reported on these in an article entitled Oldest Swords Found in Turkey on March 25, 2003. The most ancient swords ever found were forged 5,000 years ago in what is today Turkey, according to Italian archaeologists who announced the results of chemical analysis at the recent meetings in Florence. Digging at Arslantep, a site in the Taurus Mountains of southeast Anatolia, Marcellus Frangipan, professor at the Department of Historical Science, Archaeology, and Anthropology of Antiquities of Rome University, found nine swords dating back to about 3300 BC. Blade and hilt were cast in one piece. Moreover, three swords were beautifully inlaid with silver. Their length ranges from 45 to 60 centimeters, and this leaves no doubt about their use. They predate by 1,000 years the most ancient swords found in Alaka Hayuk, still in Turkey, Frangipin told Discovery News. These swords were found in a large, palace-like complex, along with 11 lance tips made of the same alloys, driven into a wall. The sword and lances were not accidental findings. Frangipin and her team found other weapons, including another sword in a royal tomb built right after the destruction of the palace in about 3000 BC, and it contained a fortune in copper and silver and gold. I would be remiss if I did not talk about these swords as uh, tools, as objects of function. Uh, this has a lot to do with my interest in swords as well as history, so I will actually take a brief moment to actually talk about the swords themselves. Now, while I don't have access to the originals, nor do I even have a reproduction of them, uh, there are some out there, they're really nice, but they're kind of hard to come by, I did make a mock-up of it. This is made from foam board, uh, which it works surprisingly well for the mock-up of this for the reason that the thickness of foam board that you tend to purchase is about five millimeters. And the original swords were about four to four and a half millimeters in thickness, uh, right around the handle, which is why I wanted to have this mock-up. Um, it's not perfect, obviously, because it's foam board. It's not really going to have many of the other properties, but you can at least get dimensions from it and have a kind of a general understanding of how well it would handle as a sword. Uh, I will note this is actually pretty large. This is the mock-up of the largest of the swords found at Arslantep. And uh, certainly it's not the largest of a Bronze Age sword that has ever been found, um, but it, I think it's significant that they came this big, namely because these swords predated other Bronze Age swords by nearly a thousand years. And that's significant. Um, uh, a lot had to go into making a sword this size out of uh, the arsenic copper uh, alloy. And uh, certainly the bronze that they made, the, the form of bronze, it's not really true bronze because true bronze is copper and tin and uses tin as an alloying agent to really strengthen the metal because copper itself is very, very soft. And, uh, and bronze itself, while not nearly as strong as something like iron, is certainly strong enough to hold an edge and, and act as a weapon. But the, the arsenic copper version would certainly be hard enough. It would hold an edge. Uh, it is worth noting that uh, the originals, the, the, the actual proportions of them would put a lot of the weight into the handle, which means there's very little mass in the blade for cutting. Um, now they can cut, they can cut and slice uh, just as good as really any knife could, but obviously it would be the thrust that would be the main focus. Uh, this point is actually tapered a good bit, would actually work fairly well on a thrust. Uh, I think the dimensions is sort of very interesting. When you first look at them, you realize just how thin the handles are. And anyone who's ever held a sword for any length of time knows that the, the sword handles aren't perfectly round, but they're also not uh, pretty much perfectly flat. Um, and, and certainly uh, people have talked, well, maybe it could be wrapped in something like a, a cloth thong or something that we wrapped around it. And that would obviously offer some thickness to the handle. Uh, but there is also the decorative inlays on some of these swords that actually cover this portion of the handle. So does that really work? Uh, most people would actually argue no, that these things would not be uh, wrapped. I would argue that that's uh, a supposition. Um, wrapping of a handle, even if it has decorative inlays on them, 
may not be an, a, a normal thing. We don't really know. Uh, the, the way the societies handle these swords is a complete unknown. And just because it has inlays and symbols on it doesn't mean those aren't wrapped up. Look at many ancient civilizations that create these really complex and ornate things just to store them away or seal them away and hopefully, from their point of view, never seen again. Um, it could have religious significance or, or some sort of spiritual meaning or meaning that, you know, doesn't matter whether or not it's visually seen. And I think that's a very much a more modern supposition. So it's completely possible, in my opinion, that these could actually be wrapped. That said, even if they weren't, uh, surprisingly the handle designs of these being very thick at the handle, but very thick very thin uh, is su actually surprisingly comfortable in the hand. Uh, you kind of palm it. The, the palm of your hand fits nicely in this curve. Uh, your fingers wrap around it fairly nicely. Uh, it's like holding a, a rather thick ruler um, in terms of how it would feel in the hand. Surprisingly, it's not too uncomfortable. All of that said, it's really hard to know exactly how these were used, exactly how the people who created them thought of them, uh, but certainly they are ingeniously made. And for being 5,000 years old, it's significant that they were able to craft something really as beautiful as the originals actually are. While the implementation of these swords may seem rough, they're actually quite state of the art. The casting of swords is something that was done very regularly throughout the Bronze Age. Bronze typically is copper and tin, and it does strengthen the metal quite significantly. But other alloying agents can be used, and arsenic is actually naturally found with copper, so just a little bit more needs to be added. How the Arslantep swords were made isn't exactly known. But we can see some processes of Bronze Age casting in examples from Ireland. It starts with the creation of casting dyes. This is usually made of something such as stone. They even had connection and joining pieces to ensure that everything was lined up properly. And once these two halves of a casting die were uh, fitted together, molten metal could be poured into the cast. Once it had cooled, the die could be opened and the blade removed and then finished for use. While it is unknown what exact process was used to make the Arslantep swords, we at least know that it was a very complex process, one that is very significant considering that it happened 5,000 years ago. These were amazing finds, and it really begs the question, what else is hiding beneath the ground waiting to be found? Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out Medieval Review on Patreon.